Hello, everyone. How are you doing out there? It's Karen Gerber here with Elizabeth Craft Designs. I'm just going to wait for a few of you to log on. Drop a line, say hello. Hello, everyone. Hi, Cora. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Anne. Welcome. Sorry, it just took me a minute to get my uh, iPad set up here. Hi, Katrina. Hi, Kim. Thank you for joining in. So the winner from Al's Facebook Live on Wednesday is Sherry Henderson. So Sherry Henderson, if you're joining in, congratulations on winning the $50 gift certi certificate from Wednesday. So today I am sharing. Oh, thank you, Katie. I'm excited to be here too. Hi, Honora and Heather. Hi, Nancy. Okay, so the reason why I'm here today is I am going to share with you my take on Florals One. Uh, Florals One was the first floral release with Elizabeth Crafts. And I store these in my Sizzix folder. Hi, Sue. I'm glad it's a nice day in Texas. It's pretty snowy here in southwestern Ontario. Hi, Heather. Welcome. And Debbie. Hello, everyone. Okay, so don't forget to like, share, and comment on the video for your chance to win a $50 gift certificate. I am trying out a new camera today, so I'm hoping that. Uh, everything goes well so florals one is what i'm working on and i'm also using um 1760 the mandela from the art journal collection hi nina welcome snowy quebec i'm sure it's snowy in quebec it's snowy here too the 1757 the blooming branches from the art journal collection and then i'm also using uh the two tags from the planet essentials two Hi, Gail. Thank you for joining in. As well as the, the circle dies and the stitched circles. So those are what I use to create my card. So the paper I'm working with today is from 49 and Market. I love their paper. So I created a, uh, a very dimensional flower. I'm going to show you how I did that. And then I've cut a circle. I'm sure some of you know how to do the, um, the shaped card with shaped dies. So what I did is I set, I folded uh, cardstock, and then I set my die just off the top edge of that fold, just like that. Okay, so you still get a fold up there. And then I just cut another circle to go on top. Hello, Lisa, welcome. Thank you for joining in. Yes, I love the Mandela die. It's very detailed. So I'm going to get started on my flowers. And here are the flowers. The colors I'm working with today, I have peeled paint distress ink for my leaves. And I also have aged mahogany distress ink. Now my comments, uh, the comments might be uh, a little delayed in getting to me, so I apologize for that. Snowy Wisconsin as well as snowy Ontario. <laughs> Welcome to Canada. <laughs> so the uh, the branches die. I just die cut on white cardstock, and I'm going to cut this apart and just tuck it in throughout my card. So as you can see, I've got a piece up here. I've got uh, a little piece down here in the bottom, and then I've got a piece here. So I just cut it apart and tuck it in where I think I might want a little bit of extra detail. Yes, I think I think all of Ontario is going to be hit with snow today. My husband's a little disappointed. We decided not to head north, but I'm okay with that. I'd rather stay safe. Hi, Belinda. Welcome. Okay. So I've gone ahead and colored most of my flowers just to save on some time. So, but I just wanted to show you how um, I color mine. 
So the last video, the last Facebook Live I did, I didn't color the back of my flower. And one thing to bear in mind when you are coloring your flowers is if the back of the flower is going to be seen, then I would color the back. So bear in mind, all my flowers for today's live, I did color on the back, okay? And I'll show you how I colored them. So I'm just using a finger dauber. Nice if I have the right color. Using a, a finger dauber. And I'm just going to start on the outside edge and just blend into the center. And what I've done for the center is I've just used peeled paint in the center. I just add a little bit of color in the middle. Yes, Kim, I love the branches dye. It's very useful. You can use it as um, when you die cut out, you can use the negative piece as uh, <laughs> my mind escapes me right now. You can use it as a stencil. <laughs> I call it COVID brain. <laughs> Stuck inside these four walls too long. So I'm, I'm coloring the backside now. And you don't need to be too particular with the back of the flower. And then what I like to do, I just like to go just on that outside edge and just add a little bit darker color, just to add a little more depth to that petal. And I'll bring it up to the camera here to show you what I'm doing. Hello, Sonia. So you can see how it's a little bit blended into the center and then the outside edge, it's a little bit darker. Hi, Penny, welcome from Washington. Is there snow in Washington as well? So I'm just going to go on to the center, the middle size flower. So I'm just coloring the petals. Then I'm going to flip it over and do the back. Belinda, you can tune in later on. I was just mainly trying to get things set up and say hello to everybody. I don't think you're going to miss a lot. So I'm just coloring the back. Very simple and easy with my finger dauber. And then I'm going to go back on the outside edges and just add a little bit more color, just add a little depth to that petal. Now you can color these anywhere you want. This is just how I color my flowers. Okay. So if you're just tuning in, my name is Karen Gerber. I'm on the design team with Elizabeth Crafts, and I am sharing my take on Florals 1 because the Florals 2 release is all sold out, unfortunately. So I'm gonna take all that off my mat, and then I'm gonna add some paper towel because I like to mist my flowers. So I'm gonna flip everything over and mist them from the back. And the reason why I mist them is because every paper has starch, and I'm gonna release that starch, and that will help the paper harden and hold the shape just a bit longer on your card. Oh, I didn't color the back of that one. And I dropped one on the floor. So let me color this one. Hi, Brooke. Welcome. Hello, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the live today. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. And then again, our winner from Wednesday's live was Sherry Henderson. So Sherry, if you're tuning in, congratulations. Okay, so I've got all those flipped over. And the shaping I'm going to do, I just want to show you how it's going to look. So there's a lot of, lot of dimension in here. And this one I did yesterday, so it's, it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard after it's been moistened and let to dry. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So I've got them all turned over and then I'm going to lightly moisten them from the back. Thank you, Sonia. I'm glad you like the flowers. Now, because this is distress ink, you're going to notice that the ink will bleed a little bit, which is on the back and that's okay. It's not going to hurt the flower any. And I am working with a McGill 6M flower shaping stylus. Yes, congratulations, Sherry Henderson. So I'm just going to let that soak in a little bit. And then I've gone ahead and colored my leaves ahead of time. So I've cut four leaves from the florals one, and I've colored them with 
peeled paint. And I didn't color the back of these because I'm not too concerned about them being seen on my card. So you might see a little bit of the tip if you turn your head, but if you're just presenting this with, to someone like this, this is what it's gonna look like. I'm more concerned about the flowers, seeing the back color of them. Hi, Patricia, welcome, and Kathy, thank you. I'm glad you like the flowers. So the water has soaked in a little bit, and I have my glue gun to the side. So I'm just gonna take the first flower, and if you can see, so what I like to do when I'm shaping a flower like this, if you can see how the edge of that, the edge of that is shaped, I like to try and create dimension and each of those little cuts in there. So as I'm as I'm shaping the flower, I am just going to press down on each of those little spots there in that petal where there is a curve from the shape of the die. Does that make sense? So I'm just gonna show you the first petal that I've done when I flip it over. That's what I've done. So I'm mainly just concentrating on these cuts that are in that petal and any curve that's in there. That's where I'm gonna add a little bit of dimension. So don't forget to like, comment and share today's video for a chance to win a $50 gift certificate. So again, I'm just going down from each little curve in that petal to create some dimension. Then I'm just gonna press a little bit in the center and then I'm gonna flip it over and press again. So there is my first petal. So you can see all the dimension I've gotten from following the curve of that petal die. Thank you, Belinda. Hello, Celine, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Okay, so I'm gonna do that with all my, my petals. I'm just gonna follow the curvature of that die. Thank you for like commenting and sharing, Debbie, appreciate that. Now, if you want a little more dimension, you could try a smaller stylus, but sometimes I don't have enough time. So I like to use the larger size. Yes, it is very cool, Jonah, to try, just to try different techniques. So I'm just going to, like, again, I'm just following down the cuts and the shape of that die. And another way that you can get a little bit more dimension from these petals is while it's still wet, I'm going to flip this over. And while it's still wet, so if you can see the dimension I've gotten already, you can pinch these little pieces together, just like that. And then it's going to end up like that. So I'm going to do the same thing to each petal. Just going to pinch them together a little bit. And then if you're a little concerned about that it's lo losing its shape, just take your stylus back in, hold on to the little pinched parts, and then just press your stylus into that petal. So I am using, um, let me grab the pack here. It's Elizabeth Crafts cardstock. It, this is the cardstock I'm using. I have done a lot of shaped flowers in my <laughs> in my time, and seriously, this is the best the best cardstock I've ever worked with for flower shaping. So I am using the 300 grams of the 300 GSM or the 110 pound. Cuts beautifully. I don't have to take die through twice in the machine, and it's really easy on my hands. So again, I'm just going to pinch these little pieces here together just to get a little bit more dimension. And then I'm gonna go back and just press a little bit in that flower. So there's that one. That's what it looks like. Okay. Maybe I should have done some of these ahead of time. So again, I'm just gonna pinch that paper together just a bit. And then just go back 
and fold that down. It just gives that petal a little bit more dimension. So pinch those together, press in the center like that. And I'm gonna do the same to all my petals, all my flowers. Yes, it's hard to believe this was just white cardstock to begin with. It's amazing what you can do with, with ink. I agree. So I'd really like to try and do this while the paper is still a little bit damp. Yeah, the 90 pound is fine too. Um, I was sent both of them. I tend to like the 110 pound only because I, uh, I use a little bit more water and I use a little bit more mediums on them. And I find the, the 110 pound great for that for your extra mediums you want to add. So I'm working with the smaller flower here and I'm just following the curvature of that petal. Yeah, she, you could probably try the watercolor paper. That would be fine. So I'm just gonna go and follow the edge of that petal, pinch those together. And I'm gonna pinch these together. This paper is very versatile, like I have not had anything rip on me yet. So I'm just following down the curvature of that die again. You can more, most certainly use the 90 pound for your flower shaping. I just prefer the 110 pound. It's just what I like to use. I like a heavier paper because I tend to add a little bit more dimension to my flowers. So again, I'm just pinching it together. Yeah, it would be nice if I could win the lottery too. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome, eh? We'd have a big card making party. <laughs> so I'm just going to press down a little bit there while that dries. Add a couple more here. Wish I could speed this up. It'd be great if I could speed up the camera a little bit. So thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and share the video. So I've done that, and then I'm going to go back, press in the center, and then I'm just going to pinch some of these edges together. And really where I'm pinching is just where there is a little cut in the die. If I put this under white cardstock, you might be able to see it better. So just where there is a little detail in that die, I'm just adding a little bit more shape there, and that's pretty much where I'm pinching that piece together. I think I would need a bigger house. I'd probably need a barn. <laughs> uh, my basement that I have here, it, it's a, like I have half, half of the basement for my scrapbook space. And I'm kind of in the corner of the room. The room's about, hmm, I want to say it's about 30 by 50. But the other side of the space is our family room, family space. So I don't want to take... So this one I'm not shaping at all. I just wanted to show you what would happen if you didn't shape it and just pinched it instead of adding any shape to it. So you could get the same effects, but I think if you were to shape that, I'll show one of these. It's almost the same. So I didn't add any shape into that with the stylus. I just pinched it from the back. Oh, you're welcome, Patty. I'm glad you're enjoying the live. And I would love to see you guys share your flowers too. There is a group. Um, there's the Elizabeth Craft Designs family group. And then there is Elizabeth Craft Designs journaling group. Um, there's awesome ideas in there. Everybody's been sharing their ideas with the florals and the planners. If you're looking for inspiration, like that's those are the groups that we have that you can check out. 
So I'm just pinching the petals together a little bit just to add some more dimension. And I'm just gonna go back and just shape that a bit. I'm almost done. So I'm just pressing down where there's a little bit of detail on that die. Yeah, this is a McGill one. There are a lot of styluses out there. Sizzix has a flower shaping kit as well, Carol. This is the one I have on hand. I have a Sizzix one here somewhere. You know how we crafters are, it's here somewhere. So I'm just gonna turn that over and press in the center. And then again, I'm just gonna add a little bit of extra shaping in the middle. So I am using peeled paint for my leaves and then aged mahogany for the red. And I'm only using these colors because my paper that I'm using is red. I hope it looks red on the video. It's actually like a dark red. So I just wanted the flowers to blend in a little nicely with the paper. So then I'm just gonna press in the middle. Oh, and I should say, so this particular flower is not pierced in the center. So I when I, when I was finished cutting them, I did pierce the center of them to make room for my foam bud. So I'm just gonna go down that petal wherever there's a little bit of cut or detail in that edge. And I'm pressing down with my stylus. And I'm just pinching the corners together, just like that. Hello, Rhea, welcome. Hello, Judy. Yes, the colors would be perfect for a heritage scrapbooking. I agree. So I'm just pinching these together and I'm just gonna add a little bit more shape to this. I'm almost done my petals and then I'm gonna go to the leaves. Oh, that one broke. Probably pressed too hard. I'm just gonna hot glue that together. See if I can hot glue it together. I think that is the very first flower that I ripped and all the cards I have made using this paper. It could be that when I pierced it, uh, the hole might have got a little too close um, to the edge. That's what it looks like. I think I just got a little too close. So I've got some hot glue there and I'm just gonna leave that one for now because I do wanna use this. Okay, so the leaves, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna flip them over. Yes, oopsie. I always say in my classes, there's no mistakes in scrapbooking. It's only a creative opportunity. <laughs> there's never a mistake in scrapbooking you can always fix it so with the leaves I'm just giving a little extra shape to the front really I'm just following the shape of the leaf from the back I'm just pressing down going down the center oops I'm going to turn it over and then I'm just going to add a little extra shape just to the front I just want that to lift up a little bit. My glue gun is a AdTech dripless high temp. I actually have three glue guns. So this one is a small, a small one. I have one that has the larger glue, the glue, um, glue sticks. That one I like to take for smaller stuff. It's got a very fine tip on it. So this one has a very fine tip, if you can see there. And I like that when I'm doing um, smaller cards, smaller flowers, I should say. Well, thank you, Nancy. I'm glad you're enjoying it. My last leaf. 
I'm just going to flip that over and then just add a little extra shaping to the tip of that leaf. So the leaves are done. And then the last thing I wanted to show you was the foam buds. So Els, I think Els is looking at um, bringing in stamens. She might give me trouble for saying that. But I've been after her to get hold of stamens. So these are foam buds. These are 6M, the size, and they're white. But what I love about them is you can color them any color. And I'm just using Distress Ink. So all I'm doing is dabbing my dabber. What foam is that? Yes, these are foam buds. Foam buds. So this is, the size is 6M. And um, let me see if I can find the packaging. So they come white, and there's various sizes. There's 2M up to 10M. So this is 6MM. And all I'm doing is just dabbing that foam bud with my ink. And you can make these any color, any color. And they hold the color wonderfully. So there's my stamen. So I've got five of them because I need five of them for my card. So these particular ones I got from India. I think Al's is trying to, these are the, the ones I'm using. This is 6M, but they come in all kinds of sizes. Yes, I hope she brings in stamens too, Sandy. And there's a few other things I would like her to um, think about. I would love to see plastic sleeves for their journals, <laughs> picture sleeves for the journals. Okay, so I've got that out of my way. So now we're gonna work on building the flower. So I've got my glue gun, handy. I'm gonna pull this in. Okay, so make sure I want to use my small ones for the detail. So there's my small ones. This one broke. I'm hoping I can still use this one because I broke that one. I'm going to go and press. I'm just going to go and press this. I didn't press this much. This is the one that I broke. I'm trying to save it. I think I'll be all right. Okay, so I'm taking my stamen. And for the large flower, for this flower, I used two of the medium size and two of the large size of the flower. And then the smaller ones I have here on the side, just as a detail. So this one is built with two medium size and two large flowers from the uh, Florals One die. So I'm going to insert that. Uh, it doesn't want to go through the hole. Hang on here. Maybe I didn't pierce them enough. Sorry about this. I'm just going to grab my piercing knot and I'm going to pierce this again. Maybe it didn't go through. Okay, so I'm going to insert my stamen. Uh, this here is a McGill stylus mat. I put two together. I have arthritis in my hands, so I like a little more cushion. Um, so yes, I believe Sizzix has one, and this one is McGill. So I glued two of them together for extra dimension and extra softness on my hands. I have a little arthritis going on. So I've noticed here, I'm just gonna add a little bit more shape to this petal before I glue this together. So I've got that. So there's my stamen in the center. Yeah, scrapbook.com, uh, Simon Says Stamp might have them as well. I know Elizabeth Crafts has a Sue, Sue, um, Sue Smith, I believe, used to have a mat. And they were promoting them on Hochanda with their first floral release. So you might find them on the Elizabeth Crafts website as well. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to the outside of this petal so that I can get them together a little more tightly. And then I'm going to do the same with this here. Little glue in the back. Happy birthday, Sue. I'm sorry. If I miss any of your comments, I will do my best to get back to you. Uh, there is a bit of a delay um, when they come through. Because as I'm watching my feed here on my iPad, I'm about 15 seconds behind. 
I'm going to insert, oh, no, I need two, two medium. So two medium, there's my small, two medium and two large. I want to make sure I keep those together so I don't mess them up. So two medium and two large. My holes are not, just re-pierce them. So again, this is the medium size. So I'm just going to try and offset that before I glue it. So it looks like that. Yes, I have to concentrate on my flowers, Belinda. Thank you. <laughs> so for those of you that are following me personally on Facebook here, um, my husband and I are building a retirement home up north. And I was to head north tomorrow. But with this lovely snowstorm that Mother Nature has brought us, I'm going to stay here in scrapbook, <laughs> create some more cards. So there's the second, there's the second one. It's very dimensional. I like, I love dimension. I'm sorry you have to go to work, Belinda. Thank you for everything that you do at your work to make things possible for all the people out there that are coming into shop. That's important for us too. So I appreciate that. Yes, I love the statements too. They're awesome. Maybe Al's is tuning in, and I know I know we had talked about her bringing some statements in. So I put hot glue on each of the bottom of the petal, and then I'm just going to try and cup, if that's a term. I'm just going to try and cup that petal up to the previous layer that I glued there. And then I don't want any too many edges sticking out like that. So I might need to hot glue that around and wrap it. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Just a bit of hot glue on that edge. Then I'm just going to wrap it. So there's what we have so far. And I have one large one to do to add. And then I'll be done this flower. I'm just going to put that in. And then a little bit of hot glue on the bottom. And same with this one, a little hot glue in the back. So there's my first flower. Very dimensional, as you can see. There's a little bit of hot. I don't mind these hot glue strands. I love having them on my flower. Bye, Belinda. Thank you for tuning in. So we're done one. Yes, they are a lot of work, Yona, but seriously, like, it's, it's so gorgeous. And I'm not saying it because I made it. I'm saying it because they are beautiful. They're beautiful flowers. Imagine what you can do with any of the floral dyes from Elizabeth Crafts. They're just beautiful. So there's one. I'm going to try and speed up here. I'm only allowed an hour, and I'm sitting at 33 minutes. I'm just going to pull this under here. I'm going to add a little bit of shaping to this one. Yes, they are a lot of work. I agree with you there, but it's so worth it. Uh, medium size one. Yeah, the, the colors, the I normally use archival, archival ink. Um, depending on the paper I'm working with, Sometimes I'll use Distress and sometimes I'll use Archival. It all depends on the color of the paper I'm working with because they both have different colors of inks, correct? So there, I haven't found a red. The geranium's not bad, but this deep red I find is nicer in the mahogany. Okay, so I'm just gonna add another one. I know my hole is there. Okay, back we go. Pull this through.
Thank you, Kim. If you have any questions uh, in regards to the flowers, uh, by all means, you know, if I don't see your comment, I will, I promise I will get back to you after the video is done, because I'm just concentrating a little on uh, putting this together for you. Just putting a little bit of glue at the bottom of that petal and bringing it up to the next or the previous layer. So a little glue here, just at the base. And then I'm going to bring that up. And then the large, there was a hole there. I just should have re-pierced these after I wet them. I didn't want to take any chances though, because sometimes you can tear the paper as I did. Thank you, Saskia. I'm glad you like the flowers. I like them too. I um I know the florals to release sold out really quickly. So I thought it would work on florals a flower from the florals one release and thought I would start off at the beginning with number one. So this is florals one. So for those of you that are just tuning in, uh, my name is Karen, Karen Gerber. I am on the design team with Elizabeth Crafts and I am sharing my take on florals one with you today. So don't forget to like, comment and share the video for your chance to win a $50 gift certificate. And our winner from Wednesday was Sherry Henderson. So I have one last one to do with this. And then I'm going to do the smaller flowers. Oh, I'm glad you, it relaxes you, Sandy. Well, that's good. I'm glad you feel relaxed. That's what it's all about, right? Having fun and learning some new ideas. Technique Friday is all about learning a couple things. And I'm glad it's relaxing you. You can turn some music on for you if you like. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Not everybody would like that. Okay, so there is my second. So there's my two, my two flowers. I'm just going to work on the small ones. I'm hoping these are all pierced. I have an extra one there that I colored. They're pierced, but I think I might do that. Actually, that's the one that I broke. I'm going to use this one. I'm just going to re-pierce these again. Well, last time, I think my other camera, I have I have two cameras. Uh, my, my other camera is an IPVO. And when I set it to automatic focus, for some reason, it does this clicking noise. Whoops. There goes one of my leaves. It does a clicking noise. And I guess a few people had... Um, made a comment about that so it can be a little annoying i understand that so i thought i would try this setup this time so for the smaller ones all i'm doing so i pierced a hole in the center and i'm adding my stamen i'm going to put a little bit of hot glue oh that one broke too okay so i'm going to do this from the back since i broke that i'm going to glue this from the back just don't burn yourself Um, you don't really need a fine tip, Jan. You can use a, a bigger tip. I'll show you my other one. I use both of them, and this is the other one I have. So this one is uh, Ad Tech as well, and that's, that's a fairly large tip on there. It would still work fine. So I just like, I, I, I work with both of them. I do prefer the, the smaller tip for detail stuff if that makes any sense but try it out like try the gun out that you have and see if it works and i'm sure it'll be just fine and if you're concerned about the glue if you have any strands hanging around you can just take your heat gun over your flowers over your card when it's all done and it'll dry up those strands really easy for you so i'm just going to insert another stamen here Work from the bottom, 
ugly there. Oh, good. I'm glad, Debbie. I'm glad the setup is working well. This is the first time using this particular camera. I used to use it a lot in the past. And I just switched my camera out thinking, you know, this one, maybe the quality wasn't that great, but it seems to be working out just fine. So for the smaller ones, I'm just going to take that petal and I'm just going to fold it out just a little bit just to open it up. So if you can see there, I just opened up those edges a little bit. And I'm going to add a little hot glue just on the back of this petal here. And squeeze that together. I'm glad you're enjoying it, Vanessa. That makes me happy. Okay, last one. I might be done in time. I don't like to go over. I'll try and like to adhere to the time set out. <clears throat> So a little bit of hot glue in the bottom of that stamen, and I'm just pressing on the back. I'm just pressing that paper down to the base of that stamen just to make sure it adheres. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of glue on the outside petals. I want that to stay together really well. And then the same here. And then we're almost done with the hot glue gun until I put everything together. Okay, and then I'm just going to take on the smaller one, just take the top of that paper and just bend it back a bit just to open those petals up. I think I'm going to add a little hot glue here. 